not really the ideal day for boating. Uh, being pretty uh, cold and all that. But uh, <clears throat> needs must, uh, it's quite early. It's probably about nearly nine o'clock by now. And uh, after yesterday, I only just, I've realized now that I've changed my house battery bank and it's fantastic, new batteries. But the starter batteries, I assumed were okay. But now because it's cold, uh, it's really, st really starting to show how weak they are. They're, very much uh, on the way out. So I only just managed to get the engine started yesterday uh, after a lot of faffing around and uh, got it started. So I charged the starter battery with the gardener and this morning I got it to start. So that's cool. But the pressing problem is I need some jump leads so that I can always make the boat start. <clears throat> um, so I've looked around, Googled the local area, nothing around. Uh, the nearest place that I could find, conceivably find, but I'm not sure whether they have it, is a place about six and a half miles bike ride away. A 13 mile round trip, don't really want to do that. And uh, alternatively, is to rock down the canal for seven and a half miles to Hinkley. And uh, then they have lots of shops there that I can get exactly what I need. But I need some jump leads so I can always start I can jump from my main battery bank to start the uh, boat at any time. After that, I can then look at replacing the batteries, ordering them, uh, getting them delivered to the postman's restaurant in, um, um, where was it? Faisley Junction. Yeah, so it's uh, provided a bit more urgency for me to get my arse in gear and get moving down the canal. So uh, that's the situation. Here we go. These ducks are going to miss me. Uh, I, I've, I've taught them how to, uh, because they're very shy, because it's out in the countryside here. As I was saying, these ducks along here, they're all wild ducks. They're not used to human beings, so uh, I'd go out and throw bread at them and they'd, they'd all run away. They'd all kind of flap off and some would even fly away. Like, oh no, it's a human being. But um, gradually, every morning I got up really early, or before I went to bed, fed them a couple of slices. And once you get one to come over and eat a bit, and the other things, the other like, hang on, what's going on? And then someone else comes over, and then they, then they realise that there's a big feed going on. And then they uh, come in, but they're still very shy, but they become a lot less shy. Uh, and I think they're going to miss me now, because I'm going to go. I've made them dependent upon human beings for food. How evil of me. Oh, the other ropes. Frozen. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's like electrical flex. I'm surprised they left these in the field. All frosty and damp. It did promise some sun, and it looks like it's trying to break through. And it looks quite blue up there above the mist, so I might be lucky. As long as it's not raining, it's good. Well, the good news is that it's melting, but uh, it's still uh, pretty icy here. Over an aqueduct. What is it down there? A road? Yeah. What's that sign say? Uh, yeah, the uh, time for the ski gloves, I think. The, uh, the step toe gloves are just not quite doing the business. So, ski gloves on top of the step-toe gloves. Ah, that's better. 
much better. There's quite an elevated section on here. Looks like it's quite a large embankment and so on. I always think how what an enormous amount of work with picks and shovels it was to build an embankment like this. Really high. In some ways it impresses me more than the tunnels because I can just see how much earth has been moved. On the way down I tried to moor along this side here because it's a lovely spot with the classic ridge and furrows opposite but just open on the corner beautiful but I couldn't get the boat into the side it's silted up so I, I carried on it's a lovely spot the canal's actually quite shallow here so if I don't stay directly in the middle the back will climb up the left or the right, depending which end it's nearest to. Using more revs than necessary. Make it easier to control using less power. And actually go almost exactly the same speed. That's better. There's definitely a, a sweet spot to be obtained. Uh, and it has to be after the engine has warmed up for a bit, for a good half hour, till it's just sitting at its perfect operating temperature. And then you the right amount of power exactly for the amount of water under the boat, because the boat speed is limited by the topography. How much water under the boat there is, how wide the canal is, how much how much it can push water around the boat. And uh, there's a bit where all those things are completely in tune and the engine is just humming along. Right now it sounds totally sweet because it's all warmed up and I'm not using any more fuel than is absolutely necessary. But if I put on more power now it will just make more turbulence and push the water around, make a fuss, but use more fuel, but the boat wouldn't go any faster, or just a very short, a little bit more fast, and it would start to get erratic, it would start to climb up the left hand or the right hand side of the canal, the back end, depending upon which near it's nearest to. So all those things are perfectly aligned at this moment. Zen of it. Disused railway bridge. strong but it is cold. Stop at Sun Wharf. It's a really nice friendly cafe. And we've finally got the sunshine. Uh, did my water, emptied the toilet tank and dumped the rubbish so I'm all set to carry on for Hinkley. So, weather is looking up and uh, got all my boaty stuff done. So, prepared for another stretch on the canal in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, this is the Sutton Wharf on the uh, water.
I mean, that's a shiny boat. A new paint job. So much nicer now that the sun's coming out. It's really nice and warm. What a difference. What a difference when the sun comes out. It's like being in a, uh, a 1950s black and white film noir movie when it's all grey and dark. And suddenly you're in a kind of Technicolor Hollywood special from the 60s. <laughs> This one. This is worth catching this boat in its entirety. And uh, the pièce de résistance. It's like the Undertaker's boat. Skulls and bones. Glorious day. Crispy and cold. Lovely. The countryside. Yeah, it was just here where I was moored. Um, I was there for, I think, three days. And when I was sitting down to work at my little desk, which looks out through the window, during the day I keep the curtains open. And there was a robin that kept flying towards the window, pecking the window. It kept doing it. I mean, I heard this clicking in the morning. I couldn't figure out what it was until I finally figured out it was a robin that was in the hedge. It kept coming and attacking the window. For three days it kept doing it. And it's only near the end of the third day that I figured out what it was. I've got reflective strips um, on my front two windows. So it must have been seeing a reflection of itself. And robins are very territorial. So it must have been attacking what he thought was an interloper in the hedge opposite, because I've got a perfect mirror. <laughs> so that's what it must have been doing. I couldn't figure out why the hell is the bird doing that? It keeps banging on the window flying toward, towards it, pecking it, and then flying off, you know. So, there you go. Stoke Golding, one of the finest churches in Leicestershire apparently, according to the guidebook. Looking boat, Brunel. Amazing, it's uh, only 12.30. But already the sun's past its zenith this time of year. And I've only probably got about three, probably four hours of daylight left. Which is okay because I'm um, I'm about halfway on the journey. So I should arrive at my destination in Hinkley. Check the bridge. Uh, on time, should be, should have enough daylight. Bridge 27. Notice now that on, directly on my left is that same church, which was directly on my right before. Because the last three and a half miles of this canal have been extremely meandering. Not quite as bad as the Oxford on the Napton 
uh, pound, but uh, pretty close. From now on, it's much straighter. Interesting crutch malarkey. Unusual. And here's another marina. I mean, I understand that it's a marina, but I always think this is a bit mean, spirited, no turning. So you're kind of asking boats to go another mile and turn around in the next winding hole. It's a bit mean, isn't it? I understand in summer where it might be a bit busy, but still it's mean spirited. Nice old kind of canal side, canal related buildings. Nice in the summer. I think that's a, uh, it's a toilet and a cafe and a boatyard and a higher place, I think. Nice. Wolf. Traffic jam. We've got a boat reversing into a, uh, a mooring. He's blocking the bridge, so I'm just waiting for a bit. Quite tricky to get that boat in there, it's quite long, it's quite thin, the uh, hole. Good, we're back to the cute stone bridges. Ashby Canal trademark. But, uh, good, I'm on the home straight now. I've got about, let me see, a mile and a half to go. And I've got plenty of daylight. Daylight in hand, great. Makes a change. Uh, good that I'm on the home straight because my feet are getting cold. And that wind is Baltic. But the sun uh, keeps coming out, so that's, uh, that's good. Anyway, so. I'm on target. Just coming into Hinkley now. And uh, the Ashby Canal is completely rural. It goes to one town only and it's Hinkley. Uh, it passes kind of quite close to a few market, uh, small market towns uh, and a couple of villages, but it's rural all the way. Um, and if you think, think you've heard of Hinkley before, you have. Marcus, it's where they, the same Hinkley that they manufactured Triumph motorcycles. It's a huge factory that way, it goes miles that way. So, uh, I just need to uh, another couple of hundred yards and I'm at my destination. The urban environment, graffiti. I think the checklist, just live it. Oh, thank you for that uh, philosophical insight there. <laughs> No space. These are private on the left, and there was not much on the right. It all been taken. The bits where there are no boats was mud. So, next bridge and beyond. Sorted, moored up. I'm uh, in Hinkley, but away from the marina. Uh, some kind of mooring rings here. It's a nice place to moor. It's quite quiet, even though it's by a road, but uh, I'm within striking distance of the big supermarkets and stuff. Um, yeah, so there's one boat, here, one my boat and this one, which is also an Orion, the same bow as mine, same boat manufacturer. So now I'm moored up. Uh, my original plan was to uh, get here, then go and buy the jump leads. Um, and it's about a mile away and because I didn't have any sleep last night um, I only needed the daylight to travel today and the days are short it meant that I had to go without sleep uh, so I'm flagging right now so uh, the jump leads can wait um, and plus, now I'm here, I'm in within striking distance, so I can just walk in and get them, even if the boat doesn't start tomorrow. Which it probably will, because we've just had a five hour run, and that's put X amount of charge into the starter batteries. Even though they're not holding charge very well, 
it's enough enough to uh, to power them so it should start uh, you know it's, it's pumped a lot of juice into them uh, so that's pretty good so uh, I can chill out I can have a cup of tea and then crash out I think uh, with a uh, Bossa de Agua Caliente a, uh, a hot water bottle in Spanish